Good morning and welcome to the Kingdom Seekers radio broadcast where Jesus is Lord. We praise God for another day, for another privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. And yes, I do have a word for you today. Please get your Bibles and open them up to the book of Colossians chapter 1. While you're at it, please get your study materials. You know I always like you to have a highlighter, a pen, and something to write with. A highlighter, pen, or something to write with. Always be ready to learn. I'm interested in getting men and women born again, first and foremost. And secondly, to make disciples for Christ. Students, pupils, learners. To teach people the basic fundamental doctrines of Christ. And then how to live a victorious Christian life and fulfill your destiny while you're here on the earth. I have a purpose and so do you. And I want to minister to you the word that the Lord has given me, and I want you to, I want you to receive that. And you have to be ready um, for someone not to have these items that I mentioned, your Bible, your paper, your highlight, your pen, and that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's almost giving the impression that you're, ready to learn. you're not ready to learn. When I went to school and didn't have my books and stuff, the teacher knew this guy's just here. He's not trying to get anything. Um, and so you don't want to be like that. You want to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Let the Lord see you ready. Let God know, I want to hear... When you bring a pen and paper to school, or to church for that matter, um, you're letting the teacher know, I'm expecting you to say something. I'm, I'm here to learn. Speak to me. One songwriter said, if I can hear from you, then I'll know what to do. So come prepared to receive instruction. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. And he also said in another gospel, take heed how you hear. Now the Amplified Bible gives us clarity on that when it says, the measure of thought and study you give to it. See, you have to do something. It's not just the minister sowing seed. Once he finished talking about the this, this sower sowing the word, he immediately went right to the hearer, the ground. Good ground, hard ground, grassy stuff. I mean, just, just different types of soil. So really, the, the, the weight of the responsibility is on the hearer. It's on me and how I apply it to my life. No wonder the Apostle James says, don't just be a hearer of the word. Do something. Put it into practice. Jesus said this, and then I'll pray for you. He said, he that comes to me and hears my sayings, plural, and doeth them, that's a Greek word, practice, puts these words into practice. He said, I'm going to show you who that person's like. See, and there were two types of people. He said, one acted as a wise man, the other one acted as a foolish man. And the foolish guy wasn't necessarily an idiot. He probably had a degree. He just didn't do what Jesus said. See? <laughs> Are you getting this? So it's so important. That's my point. Be a student and be a doer of the words so you can get some results. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live a life of failure and one day up and one day down. I want results. I want kingdom results. I want to live the way Jesus died for me to live. I want that abundant life he was talking about. And so I'm going to need some instruction. And that's why I bring my paper and pens and I take notes. I want to talk to me. <laughs> God, speak to me, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Say this with me. I am a citizen of the kingdom. I am a citizen of the kingdom. Say this with me. I am developing a kingdom mindset. Yes, I am. I'm developing a kingdom mindset. When I make a declaration like that, I'm letting hell know. I'm letting heaven know. I'm letting everybody that hears me know. I'm on assignment. I'm working on something. I'm serious now. It's like when you get up and you go to the gym three, four, five times a week or go for your walk. You let, Every time somebody sees you walking down the street, they know she's working on something. She wants to lose weight. She wants to get her health right. She wants to bl blood pressure down. She wants to get rid of the diabetes stuff. She wants to live a long life on the earth. She wants to continue to look good. People know when they see it. So when you make a declaration... I'm developing a kingdom mindset. You're letting the devil know, look, I'm not living like I used to live no more. I'm going to work on this thing. I'm going to get my attitude right. I'm going to get my character right. I'm going to treat women right. I'm going to do right in my community. I'm not going to act like that no more. I'm going to develop a kingdom mindset. I'm going to live the way God wants me to live. Boy, I almost feel like preaching. Glory to God in the highest. Say this with me. I will speak the word of the kingdom. That's very important. I'm going to speak it. Let me give you a scripture for that. You can hold your place in the book of Colossians. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus called it the word of the kingdom. 
Let me give you scripture for that. Y'all let me flow with the Holy Ghost. Let me flow with him today. Look at verse uh, 11. He answered, Behold, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to go down a little bit more. Pardon me. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's go down to verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, Jesus said that. That's why we call it the word of the kingdom. We're going to speak the word of the kingdom. Okay? And lastly, the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. Father, I'm going to pray your word over your people in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that when we pray according to your word, that you always hear us. And if we know that you hear us, we know that we have the petitions that we desire. Your son Jesus said when he walked the earth that in that day you shall ask me nothing. But verily I say unto you, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And up until now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Your word also says that we can boldly approach the throne of grace. That we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Well, we believe that. And so we come to you today. We thank you for granting us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Open up the eyes of our understanding, Father. Help us to understand what the kingdom is, how it works, how it functions, its principles, its concepts, its laws. We want, we want to live on a higher level. We realize our need for instruction from the Holy Ghost and from the Word and from the anointed office of a teacher. We need help. And you gave us these things that we're expecting manifestation today. We expect insight, clear understanding. We just read, Father, where your word says that if anyone hears the word of the kingdom, you talked about understanding. We need understanding. Your servant King Solomon said, and all that, get, it, get an understanding. Help us comprehend this stuff. This is different than what we're used to. We have educations. We've been to school. We have street knowledge. But we need spiritual insight today. Help us, Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you in advance for giving us answers, answers on how to get our children in line, answers to uh, help our marriages, to rebuild things. Help us, Lord. We thank you for wisdom to help us with our diets and how we should be dieting and how we should be living. We need insight in every facet of life. There are people that are listening today. They need to know how to do things, when to do things, how much to sow, how much to give, who to marry, where should I go to school, what job should I take. We're believing that as we speak today, you're going to illuminate their thinking, help them to see the perfect answer, the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We thank you for bodies amending, even as I speak. I decree it now as the people listen to me speak, and they're under my sphere of influence. So I decree that blood pressure will come down, sugar levels will be normal. In Jesus' name, bodies will begin to amend as I speak. I curse cancer, tumors, growth, HIV, AIDS, you foul devil, you loose these people. The word of the kingdom speaks against you. The blood of Jesus speaks against you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everybody, behold, under the sound of my voice, behold, behold, H, in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, look at verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power or the authority of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And you know me, I like to add on healing for our bodies and financial well-being. Let me give you a scripture for that before we go on. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. I advised you last week to go to the curse of the law. That's in the Pentateuch, also known as the first five book of the Bible. You go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, start at verse 15 and read through verse 68. You'll see what the Bible calls the curse of the law. Everything's in there. Sickness, disease, poverty. It's, it's horrible what's in there. Um, spiritual death. And so... Christ has redeemed us or ransomed us or purchased our freedom from that by becoming a curse for us. Read that, Galatians 3.13. The Apostle Peter, I love these, this apostolic instruction. I love it because then it's, giving, it's letting me know this is authoritative. I'm not getting this out of Ebony Magazine, Jet Magazine, you know, Circle, nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying I didn't get it from there. I didn't get it from Dr. Oz, Oprah Winfrey, wonderful people, but I didn't get it from them. 
I didn't get it from Dr. Phil. It's in the Bible. That's what I love about this. It's powerful. The apostle Peter said, and he walked with Jesus. And he said, as a pillar of the church, folks, listen to me. This is not just somebody spatting off at the barber shop or at the beauty salon. This is the apostle. Glory to God. With that said, good morning and give glory to God for the apostle Anthony T. Mays. Boy, I love apostles. God bless him. Bless listen to what he said. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, he says, You are not redeemed with corruptible things. Verse 18. He goes on to verse 19. But you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. That brings us right back to the Apostle Paul here in this verse, verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Glory to God, we have redemption. Say it, I am redeemed. The Bible says in Psalm 107 and 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So you have to ask yourself the question, am I redeemed? Have I been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Then you have a right, a God-given right on the authority of the word of God to declare that I am the redeemed. And you tell the devil how you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. You speak it. Let the blood speak in your life. Let the blood speak over your situations. Let the blood speak over your circumstances. Every now and then I'll anoint my house and plead the blood over it. Let the blood speak and let the devil know you're going to have to pass over this house. You're going to have to get up out of here because the blood has spoken. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. Now, we've been talking about kingdom concepts. I'm going to drop one thought with you and I'm going to stick with it for the next 15, 16 minutes. And tomorrow, the Lord willing, we're going to get back to citizenship. But let, let's get this one thought over to you today. Kingdom concepts. Let me define concepts so we're on the same same, same pattern. I, we want, I want to be on the same page. Okay, concept. It comes from the Latin word to conceive. Something that has been formed, not in the womb, but in the mind. It, it, it's, it's a it's a gathering of thoughts and images that are expressed in words. You come up with a concept. Now remember, we want kingdom concepts. We want God's ideas, his images, what he's thinking about. Watch this. His plans, his pursuits, his purposes. That's what we want. See, we want that. And we want him to express it to us. See, so that we can live, watch this, an abundant life life a better life do you remember the disciples of christ uh asked jesus teach us to pray that's in luke chapter 11 teach us to pray now notice he said thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven notice that the first thing jesus talked about he talked about heaven right our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come notice what came first Heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, follow me closely. Heaven and earth, according to those two verses I just quoted, in between them are kingdom and the will of God. Did you see that? Open it up and look at it for yourself. Matthew chapter 6, run right about verse 10, and go to Luke chapter 11 so you can see it for yourself. Write these scriptures down, go meditate on them. Let them get in your consciousness. Don't let them get away from you. You take the time to read these. That's why I call you disciples. I want you to go learn. Follow me. Go into this stuff and dig it out for yourself. So we have heaven. We have the kingdom. We have the will of God and we have earth. Now notice in between, like a sandwich between heaven and earth, are kingdom and the will of God. Now well, listen to me closely. Heaven is an actual place. They live and have life up there. It's a real place. I was looking at it in Revelation uh, a few days ago. Powerful, man. I mean, it talks about mountains and trees, and there's people up there. It's real life. Glory to God. Spirits of just men made perfect. Jesus, the Father, sitting on a throne. They take gold and uh, use it as asphalt up there. I mean, just crazy stuff. They take they take um, pearl, a big pearl, make a gate out of it. I mean, just it's fabulous according to the word of God and I believe the word and so God is saying it's an actual place the third heaven the apostle Paul talked about it well what is the kingdom then well we're talking about God's will 
his purposes, his plans, his pursuits, his